Hello friends. Friends, today we are going to learn one of the most important topic that is World Heritage in Part 1. Friends, this is informative lesson. This lesson focuses on the historical, cultural and natural world heritage sites in the world. The world is full of historical, natural and cultural sites with their unique characteristics world heritage a world heritage site is a site determined by the united nation educational scientific and cultural organization that is unesco to have significant cultural or natural importance to humanity Friends, the World Heritage Site is UNESCO. World Heritage Site that is of special cultural or natural significance to mankind. As such, the sites are protected and maintained by the International World Heritage Program which is administrated by the UNESCO World Heritage Committee. Therefore, such sites are protected and maintained under the International Heritage Program because World Heritage Sites are places that are significant culturally and naturally. They vary in type and include forests, lakes, monuments, buildings and cities. Due to the inclusion of world heritage sites which are significant from a cultural and natural point of view, there is diversity in their types including forests, lakes, monuments, buildings and cities. World heritage sites can also be a combination of both cultural and natural areas. From example, Mount Hangshan in China is a site with significance to human culture because it played a role in historical Chinese art and literature. The mountain is also significant because of its physical landscape characteristics. World heritage sites can be combination of both cultural and natural. For example, Mount Hangshan in China is culturally important because of its significant role in Chinese art and literature. In historical times and because of its geographically beauty. Okay friends, next paragraph. History of World Heritage Sites Although the idea of protecting cultural and natural heritage sites around the world began in the early 20th century, momentum for its actual creation was not until the 1950s. Friends, the idea of preserving cultural and natural heritage sites around the world came into existence in the early 20th century but did not materialize until 1950s. In 1954, Egypt started plans to build the Aswan High Dam to collect and control water from the Nile River. In 1954, Egypt planned to build the Aswan High Dam to divert water to control the Nile River. The initial plan for the dam's construction would have flooded the valley containing the Abu Simbel temples and scores of ancient Egyptian artifacts. 
UNESCO launched an international campaign in 1959 that called for the dismantling and movement of the temples to higher ground. The original plan to build the dam would have submerged the valley with the Abu Simbel temples and numerous ancient artifacts to preserve these temples and artifacts UNESCO launched an international campaign in 1959 to demolish the temples and relocate them to higher ground. The project cost an estimated US 80 million dollars, 90 million dollars of which came from 50 different countries. Because of the project's success, UNESCO and the International Council on Monuments and Sites initiated a draft convention to create an international organization responsible for protecting cultural heritage. The project cost approximately 80 million dollars of which 43 million dollars was raised from 50 different countries. Shortly thereafter in 1965 a White House conference in the United States called for a World Heritage Trust to protect historic and cultural sites but to also protect the world's significant scenic sites. Shortly afterwards in 1965 the White House conference in the United States called for the establishment of a World Heritage Trust which would protect 16 of the world's most important and scenic sites. Finally, in 1968, the International Union for Conservation of Nature Goals and presented them at the United Nations Conference on Human Environment and Stockholm, Sweden in 1972. Finally, in 1968, the International Union for Conservation of Nature set some goals and in 1972, they were presented at the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm, Sweden. Following the presentation of these goals, the convention concerned the protection of world cultural and natural heritage was adopted by UNESCO's General Conference on November 16, 1972. Following the presentation of these objectives, the General Assembly of UNESCO adopted the protection of world cultural and natural heritage on 16 November 1972, the World Heritage Committee. Today, the World Heritage Committee is the main group responsible for establishing which sites will be listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Friends, today the World Heritage Committee has the whole authority to decide which places should be included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. The committee meets once a year and consists of representatives from 21 state parties that are elected for 
6 year terms by the World Heritage Centers General Assembly. The committee meets once a year and consists a representative of 21 state parties elected by the General Heritage Board of the World Heritage Center for a period of 6 years. The state's parties are then responsible for identifying and nominating new sites within their territory to be considered for inclusion on the World Heritage List. It is responsibility of these state parties to find new places in their region and consider them for inclusion in the World Heritage List. Okay friends, we have gone through some paragraphs of the lesson the World Heritage in part 1. We will go through the remaining paragraphs in part 2. Friends, we have studied about some important topics such as history of the world sites, the World Heritage Committee etc. In part 1 of the lesson World Heritage, we are going to continue remaining paragraphs of the same lesson in part 2. Ok friends, let's have a glance over the new words. First word is inventory that is that means a detailed list. Second one is recommendation that is suggestion. Third one criteria fixed basis to judge. Fourth one to inscribe to print or write. Next word is territory that is region. Urbanization to include more areas in cities. Last one is allocate that is assign. Ok friends, let's get started becoming a world heritage sites. There are five steps in becoming a world heritage site. The first of which is for a country or state party to take an inventory of its significant cultural and natural sites. Friends, there are five stages of world heritage. The first stage is when a country or a state party compiles a complete list of its significant cultural and natural sites. This list is extremely important because if a nominated site is not included in the first experimental list, it is not considered in the list of World Heritage Sites. This is called the tentative list and it is important because nominations to the World Heritage List will not be considered unless the nominated site was first included on the tentative list. Then select a few for each country to be included in the nomination file from your experimental list. The third step is a review of the nomination file by two advisory bodies consisting of the International Council on Monuments and Sites. The World Conservation Union who 
then make recommendation to the world heritage committee in third phase the world monuments and site conference and two advisory committee of the world defense organization review the nomination files and send their recommendation to the world heritage committee the world heritage committee meets once a year to review these recommendations and decide which site will be added to the world heritage list the world heritage committee review these recommendations at its annual meeting and decides which sites can be added to the world heritage list the final step in becoming a world heritage site is determining whether or not a nominated site meets at least one of 10 selection criteria if the site meets these criteria it can then be inscribed on the world heritage list friends the last step in becoming a world heritage site is to check whether the nominated nominated sites meet at least one of the 10 selection criteria if the site meets the criteria it will be inscribed on the world heritage list once a site goes through this process and is chosen it remains the property of the country on whose territory its site but it also becomes within the international community once a location has been selected through this whole process it may be the property of the country in which it is located but it is considered an important part of the international community friends next point is types of world heritage sites as of 2009 there are 890 world heritage sites that are located in 148 countries 689 of these sites are cultural and include places like the sydney opera house in australia and the historic center of vienna in austria 176 are natural and feature such locations as the united states yellowstone and grand canyon national parks 25 of the world heritage sites are considered mixed that is natural and cultural peru's machu picchu is one of these italy has the highest number of world heritage sites with 44 india has 36 into bracket 28 cultural 7 natural and one mixed world heritage sites the world heritage committee has divided the world countries into five geographic zones which include first is africa second arab states third one asia pacific into bracket 
including australia and oceania fourth one europe and north america fifth one latin america and the caribbean the world heritage sites in danger like many natural and historic cultural sites around the world many world heritage sites are in danger of being destroyed or lost due to war poaching natural disasters like earthquakes uncontrolled urbanization heavy tourist traffic and environmental factors like air pollution and acidic rain friends like many natural historical and cultural sites around the world many world heritage sites are under threat today natural disasters such as wars earthquakes and massive urbanization are on the verge of due to the huge influx of tourists and environmental factors such as air pollution and acid rain world heritage sites that are in danger are inscribed on a separate list of world heritage sites in danger which allows the world heritage committee to allocate resources from the world heritage fund to that sites such such endangered world heritage sites are listed as endangered world heritage sites and the world heritage committee provides special resources from the world heritage fund for such sites in addition different plans are put into place to protect and restore this site apart from the many measures are planned to protect and restore all these sites if however a site loses the characteristic which allowed for it to be originally included on the world heritage list the world heritage committee can choose to delete the site from the list friends a place was originally included in the world heritage list for significant reasons but if that feature is lost the world heritage committee may remove it from the list to learn more about world heritage sites visit the world heritage centers website at whc.unesco.org okay friends we have gone through the lesson part 1 and 2 studied about the history of world heritage sites the world committee becoming a world heritage sites types of world heritage sites and world heritage sites in danger friends it's also our responsibility to protect and preserve 
the world heritage sites okay friends i think you have understood this lesson in both the parts very well read this lesson again and again for your better understanding wish you all the best thank you very much